everyone and welcome to Kids Blast. I'm Shauna and I'm so glad you could join us today. We're going to be doing the next part in our series, Jesus Cares. Well, as we've been learning, Jesus was a very good teacher and he loved teaching people and telling them about God. And sometimes he did this in the temple, which is a, a bit like a church. Well, one day Jesus was in the temple, but he did something strange. Instead of teaching the people about God and telling people all the things that they needed to know, he decided to sit down in the courtyard, which is sort of an outside area with walls around it. And he sat down with his friends and instead of teaching, he decided to watch everybody else. And in this particular courtyard were big boxes for people to donate money to help the church and help people in need. And these boxes were sort of metallic and they had like a metal funnel so you could hear the money dropping in as people dropped their money in. Jesus just sat back and watched people. Lots of people came in with big bags of money. Fairly wealthy people. Can you hear that money? And they'd get to the offering box. They'd dip into their big bag of money. They'd puff their chests up and they'd drop in some of their wealthy coins, just like that into the funnel. And everybody could hear the clink, clank, just like that. And they'd feel very proud of themselves and they go on into the temple. Well, more people came along with their big bags of money, puffed up their chests, grew, took out a whole pile of money. Oh, listen to all that money dropping into the box. Well, Jesus was sitting there watching and in came a woman. And this woman was a widow. That means her husband had died and in these times, widows weren't allowed to work, so they didn't have very much money at all. Well, this widow went up to the offering box and she didn't have a big bag of money. She rustled in her clothing and she pulled them out this tiny little coin. It wasn't worth very much at all. And she dropped it into the offering box. Didn't make a big cling clang like all those big coins. Then she rustled in her clothing again. And she found one more, her very last little coin. And she gave all she had into the offering box. And she walked away. Nobody paid any attention to her at all. Jesus called his friends over to him. They came to him and they thought, oh, Jesus probably wants to show us who's been giving so much money. And Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth. The widow woman has given more than anybody else. Well, Jesus' friends were very confused couldn't be right because they'd seen all those people with all those money bags and giving lots and lots of coins, lots of money. They thought, how could that woman be the biggest giver when so many more people had given so much more money? But Jesus said, it wasn't about the amount you gave. It was the way you gave it. And the woman had given it humbly and she hadn't just given a little bit of what she'd had. She had given everything that she had because she loved God. And she knew that if she trusted him, he would provide for her. But the wealthy men had been proud and wanted to show off and boast about how much money they were giving. And even though they gave lots of money, they still had lots left in their money bags for themselves. So it was sort of the opposite to what Jesus' friends thought. They thought the people with lots of 
money were the biggest givers, but Jesus said the widow woman that gave the two tiny coins was actually the biggest giver of all. So that's the same for us too. Jesus said, it's our attitude that matters most, not how much we give. And that we give what we can because we love God and that we trust him just like the widow did. That he will provide for us, care for us and look after us. So instead of showing off and making a big thing about serving God, we can do it quietly like the widow and give him everything we've got too. Now I've got some questions for you to discuss with your family. Question one, what was Jesus doing at the temple? Question two, what did Jesus say to his friends about the widow? Question three, why do you think the widow gave so generously to God? Hello. Oh, hello, Lucy. How are you going, Stoner? Good. Good to see you. What have you been up to? Well, I've just learned a new game that I thought you might like to play. Oh, love games. That sounds like fun. And the guys at home can play along too. Great. <laughs> what so, is it? So, it's called the opposite game. Okay. I say a word and you have to say something opposite to that word. Oh, I need to think. I hope you can all help me at home. All right, Lucy, let's start. Big. Oh, can you think what that might be? The opposite of big? Oh, little. Yes, that's right. Light. Oh, light. What do you think it is? Oh, I think you might be right. Dark? Yes, that's oh, the word. Thanks for helping. Strong. Strong. Opposite of strong. Thanks. Weak. Mmm. Oh, I like this game. Mean. Oh, I think that's a tricky one. Mean. Can anybody? Yes. What about kind? Kind. Yeah, that's a good one. Ah, oh, thanks. This is a good game, Lucy. But you yes. Know... You know what? Wait, wait, I've got two more rounds. Two Come more on. rounds. Oh, wow. Okay, I'll try and do it a bit quicker this time. Yes. No. Yes. No. No, no, yeah, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes is correct. Oh, well, no is correct. <laughs> oh, that was a bit of fun. Okay. And uh, oblique. Oh, that's a tricky one. I might need to think about that one, Lucy. Sounds like geometry to me. Well, yes, it's a, it's a geometry term, but it also means to express something not in a clear or direct way. Oh, uh, yeah. Because I was going to say acute. Oh, yeah, that will accept that. That works. <laughs> All right. Well, that that's a great game. You could mm. play that at home for a bit longer. But you know what? It did make me remember what... We were reading in the Bible earlier. Really? About, well, Jesus said something that was the opposite to what everyone thought he was going to say. Whoa, what was that? Well, he was in the courtyard at the temple mm -hmm. and he said that the woman that gave the, just two little coins was the biggest giver. Why was that the biggest giver? I'm sure people gave more coins than that. Well, it sounds opposite, doesn't it? Mm. But it was because... It was about the way she gave. She oh. gave everything she had with a really kind heart. Oh, so she only had two little coins. She only had two. Oh, that's so impressive. It was everything she had. Whereas those that gave lots of coins actually had lots left for themselves. It's hard to give something up when you've only got a little of it. Exactly. So it sort of seemed opposite, just like that game. It's like giving up the last Tim Tam. Exactly, Moosey. You'd find it hard to do that. Oh, yeah. If I only had one. If I had a big box of them, I, you could have one. Oh, well, yes. Maybe. <laughs> well, Moosey, I'm just reading here in the Bible in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. It says, 
Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Oh, so he also had a good attitude about it. Yeah, exactly. That's what matters to God. Our attitude, not how much we give. Ah, oh, that's really cool, Shona. It is. Well, we might play some more of that game later, Moosey, but mm. I'd like to sing now. So let's go over to Sammy and Glenn and sing a song together. To Sammy and Glenn! Yay! <laughs> First thing you're going to need is an A4 sheet of cardboard for your money holder and first things first, decorate it. So I'm going to decorate mine with some green stickers but you can choose whatever you want to decorate. You can colour it with pencils or textures or crayons or like I've used stickers or stamps or... Okay. So there we go. Then you need to turn it over and I've already done this right the Bible verse for the week, God loves a cheerful giver in the top left-hand corner, okay? It's important that's when you do it. Then you need to move to the top right-hand corner and turn over like you're turning a page. And what we're going to do is roll it up in the shape of a cone. So that means you're keeping the bottom bit there close together and you're bringing this around like that. And what you can then do is just fix it up by turning that thing and coming. Use a little bit of tape to stick 
together and two bits of tape over the hole to stop the money from falling out. See that this bit's gonna pop the vial verse? So you need to just fold that bit down like that. The next step is to get a hole punch and put a hole on each side of the cone. Then you get a pipe cleaner and you thread it through the holes. Here we have it, our money holder. We learnt today that those who follow Jesus will give with a cheerful heart. So let's use these to put some money in when we get our pocket money or whatever. Uh, and we can then, when we've filled it up, give it either into the church or to a charity that is doing great things around Australia or the world. Thank you so much for joining me today, everyone. We're nearly at the end of our time together, so before we say goodbye, let's pray to God. I'll read the prayer and you can join me by saying Amen at the end. Let's close our eyes. Dear God, thank you that you love us and care and provide for us. Thank you that like the widow, we can trust you to look after us. Help us to be like her and give cheerfully and humbly and to help others in our church and in places where people need your help. Amen. Well, that's it for today, everyone. Looking forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye for now. Bye.